All right. Thanks, everybody, for uh, joining into the Carmen Connect this afternoon, or I guess we're just afternoon. We're going to talk about maps and apps uh, really from a mobile perspective. Uh, Eric Barrett and I have been doing some uh, different things throughout the year, uh, talking to a lot of different people uh, about uh, you know how uh, you use maps and apps in your business and, and uh, what's going on out there. And it's unbelievable what uh, what's been happening. I've been trying to stay up with technology, and it just becomes harder and harder. I just read an article today about how Apple's uh, patented a 3D uh, laser virtual reality type uh, hologram. So it, it's always changing. I'm sure we're going to find new and better ways to use it within a business. So anyway, the first thing I want to just touch on is you know, why do we care about uh, uh, using these mobile de devices? 91% uh, of all U.S. citizens uh, now have their uh, devices within reach 24-7. And that's a big change from we used to have the old big brick phones, and we usually left them in our cars, or you know we didn't uh, we didn't use them that much. And you know a, a bigger uh, issue is that most or a lot of America is starting to move towards mobile only. Uh, Twenty five percent of the internet users you know use mobile only. Uh, you know a lot of people are checking Facebook and some of the social media from their mobile before they even get out of bed. So it's uh, it's changing as uh, you know fairly quickly as we go along. When you look at ownership over time, and this is, shouldn't be surprising to anybody, uh, these lines show the cell phone use, desktop computers, laptops, MP3 players, game consoles, uh, tablets, and that type of thing. And when you look at the line, um, you can see that the only one heading down is this red line here. Started out about 70%, now it's down to about 58%, and that's the desktop computers. Uh, people aren't tied to their desks anymore. They're out and about, and they're using laptops, and they're using uh, mobile devices, phones, that type of thing. So we need to, to be able to cater to those types of things, uh, those types of customers uh, from a business perspective. And the thing that really gets me, and, and I, I fall into this category too, um, you know, mobile websites, retailers who 48% uh, of the retailers have mobilized website. 40% haven't optimized their website for mobile yet. But 61% of the customers, and I'm, I'm getting this way too, is if you go to a, a, a mobile website and it's not friendly, it's not easy to use, you say, the heck with this. I'm not going to fight with it. You go to a competitor's site. You know, these are the types of things that we really need to keep in mind uh, as we go through and say, hey, you know, what do we want to do as a business or how best to, to get out there and, uh, and meet our customers? Uh, we live in a, in a multi-screen world. I know this morning when uh, I had breakfast, I had my tablet and I had my laptop and, and I had my phone right with me while I was, uh, you know, looking, scrolling through things. Uh, trying to see what's out there. So we work in a lot of different mediums anymore. It used to be, you know, we had our desktop computers and that was about it. We watched TV and that was about it. Now we're doing four or five things at once. And, and us baby boomers are probably the laggards in that. Most of the younger kids uh, are uh, are doing even more. And a lot of those younger generation are now getting into their 20s, early 30s. Uh, and they're starting to be more of our customer base. And we need to, to really take a look at that. So anyway, what we're going to talk about today is uh, finding your business online, uh, viewing mobile devices, um, using social media from a mobile perspective, uh, talking about reviews, location-based check-ins, that type of thing, uh, utilizing apps, uh, GPS devices, and uh, navigating to the business. And then we'll talk a little bit at the end about the latest uh, apps and gadgets. And uh, as we all know, that will probably change before we get off the air today. So anyway, we're going to talk about your presence, knowing and controlling that. And you know, that's always becoming more and more difficult. Uh, then we'll talk about the technology and communications. And the, the big thing is I put some slides in here that are strictly resources. So when you look at those, those are just things you can refer back to because uh, we're recording this. And you know, this is a... Uh, a checklist of what I need to get done or some resources of how to do it. So first of all, it's very important to know that on the Internet and with, with mobile also is whether you know it or not, if you're not online, your business still may be listed somewhere. 
and you need to go on and find out if your business is indeed listed correctly. You know, Google, MapQuest, Yahoo, Bing, uh, you know, those are all ones we think about, we, we search for. You know, make sure your business is listed correctly on there, how you want it listed. Also, don't forget to specialize directories. You know, Ohio has a market maker li list. There's some uh, industry-specific ones like wine growers, uh, that type of thing. Make sure you go on there and check those and make sure that you are listed correctly or, you know, better yet, that you are consistent in how you're, uh, you're, uh, how you're uh, listed. You know, a lot of times we, we sign up at different times and we're, you know, uh, we're not really consistent in how our, na our name is out there. Customers are searching. They're searching for, for certain things. Um, and this is where we need to be consistent. First of all, have your name consistent. You know, I know uh, we have a farm, Leeds Farm, and uh, we uh, uh, sometimes find it listed as Leeds Pumpkin Farm, sometimes as Leeds Farm uh, with no apostrophe, some with Leeds apostrophe farm. So there's a lot of different things like that out there. And what I want to do is I want to be a consistent. So when people search me, they have a consistent name. Then make sure your address is correct. Make sure it's consistent. If uh, you have any kind of problems with that, then make, then you may want to put in GPS coordinates or that type of thing, but make sure it's consistent. Have your phone number. Make sure that you, you have that on there and your hours of operation. Those are the things that people want to see when they search you on a mobile. You need a consistent presence in what we're calling NAP plus hours, name, address, phone number, plus your hours of operation. Let's talk a little bit about phone number when you're on mobile. You know, before when we had a website, you know, we just wanted the phone number there. But make sure it's a phone number that's clickable. People, when they're driving to your location, they're fiddling with their phone, maybe someone in the passenger seat, they just want to be able to click it and be able to call you. Uh, that's one of my uh, pet peeves about some of our extension websites. You know, I book them up online and they're not clickable. And I have to write down the number and then go back to the phone. Don't like that. I want to be able to click that phone number and go right to them. Now, as a business person, keep in mind that now I have uh, some, a lot of customers out there that can call my business very easily instead of looking them up on the line to get information. So do I have the staff that I want to be able to do that? Do I need some kind of phone system that's going to kind of move them around uh, with, with uh, some frequently asked questions? You know, how do I handle those calls coming in? That's some different things to think about. But once again, when you search yourself on there, make makes you have a, a consistent presence with NAP plus hours, name, address, phone number, plus your hours of operation. That's what people are really uh, interested in uh, from the get-go. And then there's some other questions that they can ask you later. Here's an example right here of Javasi Vineyards. Um, this is their, their Google account they got on there. They, uh, you can see that they have their, their business name. Uh, hours and directions right down here. Uh, their phone number uh, on this platform is, is not clickable, it looks like. Their, their website is. You can click on that and you can go to that. You can go ahead and, and uh, click on the time and the date and uh, be able to you know, put that in your calendar if you need to. Some different things like that that they look on that, uh, that are, are uh, you know, a nice ad addition to it. But notice, too, and we'll, and we'll talk about this more later, that on their Google accounts, it, it also has in big blue and white uh, box there, you can write a review about it. So keep that in mind. When people are getting to your place, they have every opportunity to write that review as soon as they leave it or uh, uh, why they're there. Here's another example, and this is a, a mobile example. This is Bonnie Brook Farms uh, down around uh, Dayton, or actually Waynesville down that way. Uh, now, this is a, a look at their uh, their mobile site. You can notice that the, the call button's there. You can click and do it. You've got directions and websites that you can click. And you can, if you want to go right to the website, you can go there. Directions, you can click on that, and it'll take you right to the map. It'll give you a number to call. And you can see that, uh, you know, so you get the information that you need uh, very easily. You know, if I made one little suggestion here, you may want to have some kind of hours there that, that, that they're open. So, and I know that, that uh, Bonnie Brook uh, had a little bit of an issue with, uh, over the years, they've moved locations. So they got an old location and a new location, so they're trying to make sure they move their, their customers over to a new location. But 
you know, keep that in mind when you go out there and search that. Know you know what locations listed if you had to to uh, had any make any changes. Okay, Here, here's another example of, of some some uh, multiple locations. This is Witten Farm Markets uh, down in southeastern Ohio, and Julie's done a really nice job of you know putting them on the map. So we all have the little uh, balloons at each location, and each location has some different hours when they're open. You know, some are ap open April through October, others are May through October. You know, but each market's kind of uh, uh, broken out, and then you can kind of see what's going on. This is very critical for people that you know go. Uh, they don't want to go to uh, you know think that they're going to a certain market and they're not, and then they get there and it's the wrong hours and, and you're not open. So you can you can really develop some really uh, poor customer relations uh, with that uh, that uh, type of map. So if you've got multiple locations, make sure you have multiple balloons lists. Even if your hours are fairly similar, if they're, even if they're the same, make sure each location has its own little uh, uh, blurb in there. Okay. The, a lot of times you can, uh, you know, when we talk about Internet mapping, you can embed the map directly into your uh, your mobile site and right here I just put some resources MapQuest Google that's is how you can use them to embed them in your site uh, you know some people may have developers that they work with and they know how to do this but if you want to do it yourself here's some uh, here's some good resources that you can go to uh, they're it's fairly simple and uh, it's fairly good uh, fairly uh, well done guided tour to how to how to uh, how you can in, in, in put those maps in. Once again, here's just a, a, a list of resources uh, for you know, developing maps and, and uh, making sure your listings are correct. Google MapQuest, uh, Yahoo, uh, Bing are some of the bigger ones. Once again, here's, uh, here's another list of resources I put in here. This is just a way to help optimize the search engine so when people search your business then the website you want to take them to comes up first okay so with this section you know the checklist that I that I would give you is you know go ahead go on establish a Google account create a, a Google web page and just as a side here I would do this with with all the uh, possible places that you want to uh, at, to advertise. Either it's Google or MapQuest or whatever. Go in and get your farm name. Get it tied up so someone else doesn't get it first. There's a lot of farms that are very similar in names. There's uh, you know other people that go out there and you know, if it's a like Leeds Farm, there's there's a lot of Leeds. There's a lot of Leeds Farms uh, because they're close to Leeds, England. So we get some of that too. Go out there and get and establish your your presence on the internet. Um, search the internet, find the status of the uh, of your local business. Uh, use search engines, mass directories. Make sure everything's listed correctly. Make sure it's uh, once again. Make sure your all your citations contain your NAP plus hours. Um, you know. When you get out there to enhance your listings with keywords, photos, uh, videos, customer senses, we'll talk a little bit about more about that later. But if you're like me and you pull up a website or a, a site and there's no photos or videos or reason for me to be there, then I usually don't go back. So enhance it the best you can. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, view customer comments. Some. Uh, see what's out there about you. Once again, like I said, even if you're not out there posting, your customers are out there talking about you. That's the big difference that we're seeing, and we'll talk a little bit more about this when we talk about social media, is that's the bigger difference. Used to be we used to put out a message, and that was our brand, and and we kind of controlled that. That doesn't happen anymore. You know, Now it's a conversation with the customers and they're engaged in conversations. They have something to say about how our brand is perceived. Make sure you're out there in a the conversation. That's one of the biggest reasons I want people to go out there and search and find out what's being said out there, what's how you're listed. Uh, and then the last thing is make sure you embed a map or driving directions in your company site. Make it easy for people to find you. Uh, I don't know how frustrating it is if you're trying to find some place uh, and 
you have no directions and and you're driving around trying to find it. Then when you get to the location, you're already in a bad mood. You know, we want to avoid that at all possible. So anyway, checklist. Make sure that you uh, you kind of look at these before you uh, uh, as you move along. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about the web presence that you want. There's there's a couple different uh, uh, ways that you can become mobily accessible. You can be an, you can have a native app or you can use a web app. And there's pluses and minuses to all of them and, and we'll kind of go through those. First of all, a native app is one that's built on a specific platform. If you if you build an app for Apple, it's available in the Apple Store and it's going to play on the the iPhones or the iPad. That's what uh, that's what it's built for. It's not going to play on on an Android. Google, uh, Windows, BlackBerry, Android, you know, they're all specific platforms for a native app. The good part about a native app is you can take advantage of all the features of the, of the, uh, the phone or the uh, tablet, where you know, some of the other ones we'll talk about, you don't get quite everything. But you know, do you need that much, uh, much interactivity? It's w according to what you really want to do with the app. You know, are you uh, want people to pay through it? Are they going to be able to order through it? What do you want to do with that? And that's completely up to you and how you want to handle your, uh, your web presence. The second type of app is a web app. A web app is just a you know, basic language that, that they write that will work on all types of devices. It will work on app, you know, one app or web app will work on Apple and Android and Google, and you don't have to build four or five other ones. The downside of it is sometimes it can't take advantage of all the features of the phone. But if you're just wanting it for you know people to be able to get to your location and uh, and be able to call you, then that may be enough. You know, you need to kind of decide. And that's the way with all this stuff that we're going to talk about is you, you know. Integrate this into your overall marketing and business plan. Don't just go out there and say, well, this is new technology. I want to use it. Figure out how it works for you, and then, uh, then kind of go from there. Um, what you want to do when you first develop an app, or you, or you really haven't, you have a website, you want to go out there and see what it looks like on, on a mobile device. Here's two uh, really good ways to take a look at it. Uh, Google uh, Pages Insight, HubSpot, uh, you go to those, you put your website in, and it will show you what it looks like on mobile devices. It will give you a, an example of all of them. Now, with that being said, it's, it's a great way to go in and take a look at it. But still, even after you've looked at that, you know, pull up, grab, some, grab an iPhone or a tablet or whatever and pull it up too and see if you're getting some consistency there. Um, there's some subtle differences, but overall they, it does a really good job. But know, you know what your website looks like because it's very different. You know, once again, thinking about what customers are using your mobile website for. You thumb down through it. Uh, you know, it's not as easy to scroll side to side as it is just to take your thumb and just go up and down. So keep that in mind as, as, you, uh, as you're looking over your website. Now, what, and once you look at it, you, you got to think about some some uh, some of the different features. When you uh, look at a web design, there are some domain names that can take you to a little diff, different website. Uh, I've got uh, Maze Valley's uh, in here. Uh, uh, they do a really nice job of of having that mobile presence, but it's a, a little bit different website. So it's a, it's not their complete website, but it's an M dot. And so what it is is a mobile website, and so when you look at it, it's much different than their total website. When you go to Maze Valleys, and we'll see an example, see there's there in a little bit, that there is a, another button on it you can push and go right to their total website if you want to do there. It's a different ULR, but it works on all uh, different devices. The big thing, too, is when you look at your current website, uh, you, you think about we put stuff on our website or even our mo even if we're using a mobile website, a web design website is still you know, what's on your website. Um, you know, make sure it fits what you want to do with it. I just put an example on here. Uh, one of the best things we ever did out the farm was uh, 
was YouTube videos that we put on our website. And we have one of those zip line, and, and I'll talk about it here in a little bit, a little bit more. But on a mobile device, it takes about uh, 10 seconds, 15 seconds to load. So I'm like, that's not acceptable. When someone's on their phone, they want to be able to load quick, less than five seconds usually. And that, I'll have a little checklist here for in a minute. But so what we did was that underneath of it, I just took the zip line and put pictures on. Loads really quickly, three or four seconds. Then you can kind of just flip through them. It's not as impressive as the video, but it gets them the flavor of what I'm trying to get across. So when you look at that, you know, ask yourself, what do I need to change? You know, what are the capabilities that, that I have on my website? Are there ways that I can that I can make it more user friendly when customers are, are looking at it through a phone? Got very different uh, uh, you know objectives when they're looking at it. I still want to give them the flavor, but I want to take too long doing it. I don't know about you guys, but you know, it says my phone's got three G or four G on it, and I'm sometimes I'm lucky to have one X. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, if you're interested in changing your website over to a mobile website, uh, due to mobile is is a, a good website. You can go in, and um, there's other ones out there too. But this one right here, you just type it in, type it in, and it will uh, uh, show you how to change your website for mobile, and then uh, for a fee, it can it can kind of do it for you. So that's one. One way that you can do it fairly inexpensively, and Javasi vendors use it, and there's a very nice website. Um, now there's others, going back to the native apps, that have written language for each specific platform. Here's Raisin Rack, uh, but they, you know, they're doing a little bit more with it. They're, they're uh, using it for a checkout, they use it for couponing, some different things like that. So it's a little more in depth, but uh, you can see right here, says, you know, download our free mobile app um, uh, at the Apple Store, and then they got uh, another one that they can go over to Google and, uh, and download that. So it's a little bit different how they're using it, but they want with a native app, a little more expensive, but they can take advantage of a little more things. You can see that they do a lot of couponing, rewards. They're using a reward system and some recipes and some different things like that. They have the ability to buy online, check out. So a little more in-depth. Than, uh, than maybe some of us, but know that that option's out there. Once again, I'll go back to, to the Maze Valley. You know, they do a mobile website. It's uh, one platform written for all, all different uh, uh, devices. And you can see on here, they got, if you want to go to the full website, they can take you right to it. It's up to you what you want to do, or you can, uh, you can download the app. They've got a lot of different things you can do, images and, and like that. But you can see that that's a very mobile-friendly website. I don't have to do a lot of moving. I can move around pretty quickly when, uh, uh, when I'm on their, uh, their mobile website. What do customers want when they're talking about apps? First of all, like I talked earlier, they want fast loading. It's nothing worse than trying to figure out you know, you're driving along or you're at a stoplight, hopefully you're a stoplight, or the person in the next seat is trying to, uh, to, trying to look something up and it taken forever to load. You know, how, can you, uh, how can you speed that up? Once again, uh, like I told you, we decided we w went with uh, pictures. We had the video on there. If someone wants to take the time and do it, they can still see it. But if they want to just slump through the pictures, they can do that really easily and get them the flavor of it. And um, feel free to, to look us up on, uh, on mobile and, and see what you think. But uh, we're always changing ours. Customers want mobile-friendly features. You know, I've talked about a lot of us are in the baby boomers or we're all getting older and we can't, you know, we like things big. We like things easy to find and easy to scroll. Once again, you're, you think about when you're working your phone, you're working with your thumbs. Thumbs are much bigger, a little harder than the keystrokes we do on our laptop. So we need to be able to hit the bite button, make it easy to scroll, make it easy to uh, to search, you know, be able to pinch down uh, when you want it smaller, but be able to uh, to widen it out and be able to see something when you want. You know, those types of things are uh, ways to make your mobile website more user friendly. Uh, they want to know, have easy access to business information. Think about what they're using it for. Nap plus hours. They want to be able to get to your place. They want to have product information. 
uh, so it's easy to read on there. They want to know your name, they want to know your address, how to get hold of you, phone number, and then they want hours of operation. You know, those are the types of things that they're very interested. Um, design it so they can get to that information really easy uh, and, and, and be able to move anywhere else they want to with ease. Once again, just hitting the buttons, being able to move around, make sure the buttons are large enough you, that they, they, can, uh, they can hit them. Once again, when you're scrolling, when most people are scrolling, it's much easier to scroll up and down than it is side to side. So make it easy for them to hit you know, what they need to hit. Okay, as far as a check, checklist for this, develop a website. If you don't have a website, but when you do it, think about mobile. If you already have a website, go out there and view it you know, through one of the websites where it can give you all the options. Or, better yet, I, I would do both, view it for the website, but view it on at least one mobile, web, or mobile device so you know what it looks like. There's a little subtle difference. There's nothing big, but know what you're looking at. Develop a plan to move, improve your mobile website. The way technology is changing, there's always room for improvement, no matter how, uh, how good your web presence is. Uh, once again, move forward in a strategy to uh, improve your web presence, and I would say as part of a total marketing plan, you know, have it all in conjunction. We'll talk a little bit about that as we go into social media. And then uh, investigate options if you really want to go to, uh, to an app type thing, you know, do you want to do a native app or a web app? Ask yourself, what are we really trying to accomplish this? What is our objectives? And then you can kind of decide which way to go. You know, for a lot of the agritourism farms that, uh, that I work with, the web app, good enough. That's what we want to do. But if you're into more selling, uh, purchase, change of uh, you know, security, then you may want to go with a native app. See how it works out for you. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about social on mobile. Uh, social networking is still huge and getting huger. Uh, we're always uh, getting more and more types of uh, operations uh, or um, platforms out there that we can work with. You know, for a long time it was Facebook, uh, Twitter, and, and you know, we had YouTube. And now we've added Pinterest, which is a really fast-growing one now, and uh, Foursquare and Yelp, and there's a lot of reviews out there. And I won't go into a lot of them, but we mainly want to focus on, on how you use them and how they're a little bit different with mobile. Okay, with social, usually I, I show our video here, but since we have uh, uh, limited time, I won't go into that now, and you guys are welcome to go to the Leeds Farm website if you want to see it. But anyway, I wanted to put it here to remind me to, to tell everybody, when you talk about social, it's about the relationship. It's not about selling. It's about building that relationship, and that's what it revolves around. We want to move our customers from awareness to trial to being a customer. And for some people, that's enough. But what we really want them to do is we want to bring them in to being a friend, if you're on Facebook, or we really want to bring them in to being a fan and being a loyal fan. That's what we want to end up doing, because in social, as we talked about earlier, is we realize that we don't control the message. You know, customers, consumers are out there talking about us. So if, our, if they're a fan of ours, then they're more out there and they're willing to talk uh, positively about us and relate their good experiences. So know, it's, know when we talk about social, it's all about the relationship. Okay, here's an example of Gervasi Vineyards. Uh, once again, they do an excellent job. They're on just about every social platform out there, which is really good, but they do a nice job of integrating it all back in. With Facebook, you know, building on Twitter, uh, building on the YouTube channel, and also integrating Pinterest. You know, Pinterest is much more of a visual market than, than you get with the, uh, the other uh, platforms. Facebook, uh, Twitter also have some visual components to it, but it's a little bit different. YouTube, uh, YouTube's still my favorite, just because I can, I can house my videos on there and embed them in different things, but it's great when you use them all together. To drive traffic, there's nothing better than having pictures, having videos, 
especially if they're cute and cuddly. Uh, we've talked about that several times with, uh, with different groups. The idea of driving uh, conversations you know, starts with this idea of grabbing their attention. Uh, pictures and, and uh, videos are, is nothing better. But once again, when you get them to one platform, you know, first of all, on your website, you want to go ahead and have the icons so they can go easily to your Twitter account or your Facebook account, jump up to your YouTube channel or jump over to Pinterest. And then within those, you know, Facebook, we can connect that to YouTube. We can connect that to Twitter. Make sure they all work in conjunction together. Keeping in mind that, that a lot of people now are viewing the, uh, the social network you know, on mobile. So things have to be a little more condensed. Maybe you don't use uh, YouTube as much as you used to because it doesn't load fast enough. But keep this all in main mind as you go through. Foursquare, I think uh, it's been around for quite a while, you know, playing in there, is becoming more and more like, uh, like Facebook all the time. Foursquare, once again, if you're not on Foursquare, go out and grab your domain name or grab your uh, – area there. Make sure your name is on there, even if you're not going to use it so people can, so, so someone else doesn't grab it. It's a check-in type uh, uh, social media. They come in and what they do is uh, when they get to your location, they check into your location and it basically sends out the message to all their friends that, hey, I'm having a great time and I'm at you know, Midway Market or whatever uh, that happens to be on there. That's what it usually starts for. Uh, you know, on the uh, Foursquare page itself, it has maps. You can put photos in there. Once again, they can also review you. Every one of these has a review section. Make sure you check in with that. So it talks about how many people checked in, and whoever checks in the most at your location gets to be mayor. Uh, so it's a way to uh, for someone to be recognized. Yes, I've, I've checked into Gervasi's the most, so now I'm the mayor of it. How do people use this for business? There's a lot of different ways. Once again, going back to what's your objective. You know, you can offer, you know, uh, incentives for the first person that checks in or the first 10 people that check in uh, and tell their neighbors and their friends are there. Uh, can be a free bottle of wine or whatever. Or if you're more into you want, you know, larger groups or you want in, uh, in, in your establishment, well, the first, one, first uh, group with over 10 people that checks in can get a, 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 a some kind of incentive. There's a lot of different things you can do with this. Uh, and then when they, you, you know, say your friends check in and there's a little thing across the top that says, hey, what are my friends like? And if you click on your friend, they can, you, they can see what their friends have checked in. So there's a lot of different things like that. Once again, it's a social uh, interaction type website. Gives them a chance to share with people where they're at. Uh, gives them a chance to share what they thought of the experience once they were there, and it get, offers you a chance to, to uh, you know, put some photos up and to offer some incentive for people to come in and kind of check. So it's once again, it's a very interactive type thing, and it's becoming more and more like Facebook all the time. And you can see that it's connected to Facebook. You can sign in through Facebook and get into Foursquare. Uh, so it's making it a lot easier to kind of uh, manage some of this stuff. But Foursquare. Just know that there are some check-in uh, type locations out there, and Foursquare is one of them. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, reviews on mobile. Uh, and all your mobile sites anymore are asking you if you want to review them. If you find, if you go, uh, if you're in Yelp or um, uh, use a Google to get to a location, as soon as you get back in the car to leave, a little thing pops up on your phone and says, do you want a review? So know that's out there. You're getting more and more reviews every, all the time. And I'm finding more and more reviews are on those mapping sites, Google, MapQuest, even some of the GPS stuff we'll talk about later, than I'm finding on some of the other sites. Make sure you review them. Now, uh, for everybody that's kind of heard me talk about this before, uh, Know that there's going to be some negative reviews out there. Try to set your emotions aside and, you know, deal with them uh, accordingly. Uh, I've told uh, people before that in our operation, I am not dealing good. I'm not good, good at dealing 
with negative reviews, so that's why I do not look at them anymore. Uh, I have uh, people that uh, that work for me, uh, some younger kids, and they read them, and they're very good at responding. If there's one that they can't respond to, then they'll run it by me, and then I'll tell them you know, how we want to do it, or I'll respond to it. But the idea is know your limitations. If you don't have thick skin, if you take things a little personally, which I do because you work hard on these things, if someone didn't like them, you know, be able to respond in a professional manner. Know your limitations, I guess. And uh, the sales manager, uh, Jeff Hicks here, um, has says the same thing. When a harsh review is posted, try to put your emotions aside, learn what you can, and then uh, uh, from the publicly posted comment. If you're, you're working with people, there'll be some negative comments, but, you know, respond in a, uh, a professional manner. Um, Sometimes uh, you can't. You can do it very easily. Thank you for the, you know, the the comment. Appreciate it. We'll try to make these changes. Or you know, hope you have a better uh, visit next time. But uh, if it is, um, oh, drop back here. Uh, if it is uh, kind of an outline or unprofessional kind of comments, or if you engage them and then they keep coming back nastier and nastier, know when to take that offline especially when it's mobile, you don't have a lot of, uh, uh, of uh, old time to be able to do something like that. So take it offline, and then you can talk to the person privately. It's better than, than keeping it out there. So anyway, uh, as far as resource links, there's a lot of good uh, articles out there about using Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Pinterest uh, for your business. Uh, uh, LinkedIn is great, especially if you're, you're if you're a business that sells to other businesses. That's the one that I would kind of look at. But if you're doing more selling to the general public, sometimes it's well, it's better to be on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. You know, know the demographics of different things. You know, Facebook is is an older group. Now, when I say older, I don't mean really old. Like 25, 34 is the uh, the majority of the people that that uh, that use Facebook. Twitter, it's the younger people. It's the 18 to 29-year-olds. Is that your target audience? You know, who uses what, uh, what, you, uh, what you're trying to, uh, trying to develop a relationship with? YouTube is more of a male-driven market, so it's a little bit different over there. Know your demographics, kind of look at it, and each of these, you, know, you can decide whether you want to you know, do an ad to boost your traffic. Uh, you can pay a little bit to do that. I've heard pros and cons about both of them. So take a look at that, and uh, there's some additional resources there on the uh, Social Media Examiner out there. So those are some uh, some links for you. Here's some other uh, resource links when it comes to mobile check-ins, uh, Business for Foursquare, and uh, Facebook Nearby, which is very similar. Uh, you know, give you some resources of how you want to uh, to work with uh, these uh, social uh, mobile sites. These are the uh, uh, review sites, uh, Yelp, Urban Spoon, TripAdvisor, uh, Food Spotting, you know, a lot of these different things out there. If you're more of a, uh, uh, an agritainment uh, type uh, operation, and maybe TripAdvisor is more than what you want to do. If you're more food, Urban Spoon or Food Spotting is a little bit different too. So these are some resources you can kind of go to, and, uh, and uh, you can uh, – um, figure out, or it'll help you uh, develop your plan. The big thing is when we talk about these review sites is, first of all, don't have people out there just posting reviews. Those come across very fake very quickly. Uh, I've seen some of it happen, and I've never seen them in very well. If there are people out there, and you'll get these calls that want freebies to do reviews or something, especially if they got a blog or something, Make sure, once again, going back to what is social about, it's about the relationships. You don't want to lead people astray. If someone is posting out there and they got uh, a freebie for even if you know, a little bit off or whatever of, of uh, the meal, you know, make sure that they're upfront about that. People do not, you know, people come because they trust what you are saying. They want to work with you. They see you as their farm. Don't break that trust. So don't uh, you know, get caught up in fake reviews or anything uh, like that. There's uh, 
uh, several ways you can deal with reviews, uh, harsh ones, and different things. Like I said, you can engage them, be professional. If it becomes an issue, you can take it offline. And a lot of times, if there's a harsh one on there and your fans see that, they'll go ahead and, and kind of react for you. We had one like that that she thought it was a negative review to me. It was kind of eh. But she didn't like it, so so she wrote a real positive one right next to it. And then another person come in, another person. Then pretty soon that review kind of falls down the list. So don't worry about it. You know, just take a look at that. Just wanted to stick this in here. Google Alerts. They kind of changed their platform a little bit there a couple months ago. There's several out there, but go ahead and set up an alert uh, to, to uh, find out if anybody's out there talking about you, what they're doing. For people who don't uh, aren't familiar with Google Alerts, gives you an opportunity to put uh, the terms you want to put in. Uh, you know, we put in Leeds Farm or OSU Extension or whatever. You can put that in there. What type of results that you want? Uh, you know, you want just blogs, or you want pictures, or you just want everything, uh, English or uh, language, then you can say about regions. You know, if you're just interested in Ohio, or you're just interested in the United States, or wherever, you can you can put that in there. Then you can say how often do you want it. You know, what I do usually is in season when we're open. We're only open September and October. In season, I usually get once a day. I want to know what's going on out there. If something happens, I want to be able to respond quickly to it. Uh, one of the best uh, ways to, uh, to, to deal with reviews that are negative is to come out and comment fairly quickly. Uh, so I do it once a day. Then when we're off season, I change it and say, hey, once a month's fine because we're not really open now. There's probably nothing really new going out there, but I still want to stay up on it. How many results you want? You know, on the best, then you want it, then you put down your email address, how you want it, or where you want it delivered, and then it can ship it to you. Uh, you know, the uh, when they have it. So anyway, set one of those up. Make sure that you uh, you have that out there. As far as a checklist, uh, make sure you uh, register, get something out there that will uh, let you monitor what's going on out there. Uh, Google Alerts, social mention. Mention.net, these are all really good places you can go, and I'm sure there's a lot of others. There may be some out there that are specific to your industry, so you know, check them out. Uh, create a, uh, a consistent presence uh, with your social media apps. Like I say, just make sure they all work together, and it's all consistent. That's the big thing about uh, being on the Internet. A lot of times we get sloppy and we let things go. Like I say, you, you maybe leads, maybe leads pumpkin farm, maybe some different things. Be consistent with it. Uh, you can shoot, you know, shorten things down. You can use Hootsuite to, to help you post on some of those. There's pluses or minuses to those, but you can kind of work through those as you go. Uh, connect with social media sites that are relevant to your customers and your market partners. You know, know the demographics. Is Facebook the way you want to go? Do you want a younger crowd? Go with Twitter. If you're looking for the males, you know, most of the, the people on YouTube are, are, uh, are males. And then, once again, you can integrate them into each other. Offer incentives for customers. You know, first uh, five people that uh, checks into uh, 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 your establishment, you, uh, you, they get a free whatever. You know, a bottle of wine, some different things like that. That way, you're you're encouraging people to check in, and when they check in, they're telling their friends about it. Visit sites, know about the reviews, and explore other uh, apps that uh, may fit your your business goals and strategy. Once again, I just can't emphasize that enough. When you talk about mobile, when you talk about social media, make sure it works in with the rest of your marketing plan. Uh, it just makes it a, a whole lot more advantageous. We look at it sometimes and we say, well, it doesn't cost a lot, it doesn't cost us anything, it's just our time. Uh, but, you know, a lot of farmers, they don't think about what's their time worth. And, and this is one of the things you can get caught up in. It. Make sure it's worth your time. Okay, let's talk a little bit about some other uh, mobile, uh, mobile uh, media marketing. Uh, we're going to talk about GPS and points of interest. We'll talk about SMS campaigns or texting, uh, deals and mobile coupons, 2D codes, geocaching, uh, location-based services, and then most, 
the mobile commerce, customer service, and loyalty. You know, all these things kind of kind of work in as as we go through. First, let's talk about the in cars GPS system. Uh, you know, a lot of people now are using Google Maps right off their iPhone or their Android to be able to to get around. So you think, well, they're not using the, the Garmin's and different things like that as much. Tom Tom. Well, a lot of people are still using those. A lot of them are come standard in the car, so they're using that. A lot of people are using their phone for calls, music, and a lot of other things while they're driving too, so they don't want to use it for, for directions. So know that this stuff's still out there. Uh, we're getting more and more uh, ability to have live traffic updates with these, speech recognition. There's a lot of things that, uh, that are still going on. So you want to make sure that you go out there that um, that you uh, are able to you know, list your business on there, and we'll talk about that in a second. But first of all, if you're already out, if you're on there, make sure that your GPS points of interest is accurate. Uh, heard more and more people talk about how do you get these things changed. Well, there's about two mapping companies that um, that provide all these uh, these organizations, businesses, with the maps. So you've got to know who's using what and how, how they can get them changed. Now remember, it's going to take a while for this to happen. You know, first of all, um, you go, first of all, you've got to send the, the, the note in to the, uh, uh, to the complaint department or the the updating department and then they'll take it and then they then they'll look through it and make the change if uh, if they can figure it's needed now just because they made the change on the map doesn't mean it changes in what's in the cars they have to you know people have to upload their maps or change their maps uh, to be able to get that change so there may be still some inconsistencies in how people are uh, that in your location, they may be still be taken to the wrong location. I know on, on Garmin with ours, for some reason when they put our place in there, it was taking them to a subdivision just down the road. So it took us a while to get that changed, but we did kind of like what Bonnie Brook here. In our other um, pro or marketing, we told them that, hey, we're having some trouble with this. Here's a, a good example from Bonnie Brook, and I, I've been down there several times, and I use uh, different mapping uh, platforms to get there just to see what's what's going on. And here, what they did was they put it right on their mobile website. They put the longitude and latitude so people could just plug that in and go right to it. And they put a little note: you know, some GPS systems, internet maps do not work well in the country especially down there is because they're really close to a reservoir. Some of the roads show going through and now just drive to the reservoir. So anyway, they incorrectly show or that these are thoroughfares. They are not. Don't take them. And for some reason, all these, if you're on buses, they, don't, they think buses can go down any road, and they just can't do it. So they put a little note on there, buses cannot go down route, State Route 35 or 350. So they know that if somebody's bringing a big group there, they don't try to go down that. So there's a lot. There's some things you can do like that to try to help, you know, be, without going, you know, right through the, uh, the the companies themselves. So here's your resources. If you uh, want to get on, or if you uh, have um, a location that's incorrect, if you're working with a group that used Tell Atlas. There's your website. Go to it. Get things changed. Navtech. There's your other one there. And then uh, there's some other resources here. You can you can update your listings. But if you go to these, you can uh, you can also uh, be able to put your point of interest if it hasn't come through, and, and they can kind of click them and go. So those are those are good resources or sources to have. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Big thing is make sure it's correct. If you uh, have a problem problem with it, you can scroll over it, see what the longitude and latitude of your location is. Then you can kind of uh, kind of put that in. This is um, uh, a location, and you uh, right hand click on that, 
and you can use directions, but you can also report a problem. If there's an issue with it, um, you, Gervasi could go ahead and say, hey, these coordinates aren't correct, and be able to get them corrected that way. GPS uh, checklist, identify your business, make sure the coordinates are correct, uh, review the data sources uh, for as many as you can, make sure there were request uh, corrections, any enhancements you want to make. Once again, if you have an opportunity to put uh, uh, a picture up or some different things like that, go ahead and do that. It makes it look more professional. Uh, make notations about uh, uh, communications to improve the uh, GPS user's experience. If there's an issue with it, you know, put it out there on your mobile site so people can see that. Say, hey, I don't want to take this road. If I go down one more, uh, then it's going to be a little less curvy. It's going to work better for buses. You know, try to in, uh, improve their experiences uh, anytime you can. Uh, texting, uh, we have a lot of people that are using texting campaigns. The big thing with texting campaigns is keep your messages short and make sure it's an opt-in program, not an opt-out. Uh, you know, I, were, I opted in to one for Home Depot. Very good. They send me little coupons. Uh, they also use some location stuff when I'm in the store. But once again, I opted in for it. I know that I said, yes, I want to be part of it. On an opt-out thing is, well, you're a part of it unless you opt out. You know, people forget and uh, you know, to, to opt out and they say, why am I getting these? You don't want to, to have a negative experience like that. So if you're doing any kind of texting, you know, make sure that uh, you, uh, you have an opt-in uh, clause in there. Um, digital markers, make sure the, uh, the, uh, when you're texting, you can send coupons, you can send the, the, uh, Q, the 2D codes, QR codes, different things like that. Uh, there's a lot of these deal of the day, Groupon, Groupon excuse me, Living Social, Google Offers. There's a lot of that different things like that out there, too. You may want to take a look at it, see if that's something you want to do also. Um, Groupon uh, and Living Social, you know, it's quite a bit. Uh, what they're taking off is quite a bit, so make sure that fits into your marketing plan. Here's a mobile coupon example from Groupon for Bonnie Brook Farms, and I, I talked to them, and they said it worked great. Um, they offered a, a uh, to be a deal today. You have to offer at least 50% off, and of that 50%, then the uh, Groupon takes another 50% of that, so you're basically getting 25% of what uh, of what you normally would get. But you put it on there, you do the advertising. Uh, they said it worked great because they didn't offer a lot of them, and that uh, deal stayed up all month, uh, even though it was was already uh, sold out. So they thought it was great advertisement. Take a look at that. See if that's what you want to do. The big thing about Groupon is those people that buy the coupons and come out to your place, uh, Groupon's not going to give you any kind of information on those. If you want to get that information, you need to capture that yourself when they come out, uh, when they redeem the coupon. So don't be afraid to go out and do that. But, uh, you know, Bonniebrook Farm seemed to have a very good uh, relationship with this. Here's an example of another deal of uh, Lens Farm that they used uh, texting, uh, sent out uh, for their warehouse sale uh, earlier this year. Once again, it's a great way to offer deals. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the 2D codes. They're becoming more and more popular on our mobile devices just because that's how we read them. So QR codes, you, you take your thing out, you scan them. Uh, the uh, code takes you directly to a website or a picture or whatever. The only thing I would say about these codes is make sure it's worth your effort. Take them someplace, a coupon. Take them to a video, whatever. Take them to someplace original. Don't take them to your website. They can get to your website. Take them someplace they can't go. Make it worth your while. Uh, we have one on the farm. You scan while you're waiting in line to, uh, to pay, and it's a map of the farm. You can look out and see what you want to go to once you get through pay. It's a little bit different than just taking the website. Near field communication is something that's coming on. It's not available in the, uh, the Apple products yet. And that's where you just take your phone and you just wave it close to it so you don't have to open it up and scan the code. These are coming on. Use them if they fit into there. Once again, uh, they're becoming more and more sophisticated. You're able to track uh, who's scanning them, where they're going to them. 
and uh, so this data is very valuable. So don't forget the two R codes. Here's an example: Gobert's out to uh, Illinois, do a really nice job with them. Uh, I've seen several presentations, and uh, they they do a really nice job of using them uh, within their market and also within their agritourism in, uh, um, business. Um, best practices: uh, plan your mobile strategy. Make sure that you are uh, you you integrate it all together. Uh, create quality codes within those. The shorter the URLs, the clearer the image is, the easier it's going to be to scan. So there are several services you can go to to you know, shrink that, uh, Q, that URL. Make sure you use that. Link to something that's fun and something that's mobile uh, optimized. That way they'll be able to have a good experience. You, and that's the big thing. Uh, track and measure what's in there, but the, the big thing you want to know is to make sure that you have they have a... Uh, favorable user experience, and that way they'll look at them time and time again. Okay, geocaching, just real quick, that's where uh, you hide different things and GPS coordinates and people go out. It can either be farm specific or it can be something that is done nationwide. There's a big group of them out there doing it. We've done it several times through 4-H and some different things, but geocaching, there's some farms out there that are, that are uh, they're working with it. You know, Cherry Crest is one that, that's done quite a bit of it. Another thing that's coming on is this mobile commerce. You know, Starbucks started a while back. Uh, you know, we've used it with Square and PayPal. You just plug things in and you scan the card through. You know, a lot of my guys I work with around here are selling hay. You know, they'll be able to take credit cards now because they can take them right through their phone with with Square. PayPal is the same way. Uh, Google Wallet. They're all out there. Now, in, in stores, you know, Starbucks was the first one of this. They're actually just scan your phone. I just saw there uh, yesterday that Wendy's and uh, Burger King were coming out with uh, an in-store purchase, an app, that you can pay with your phone. So it's a little bit different, uh, but that's something you may want to think about for your business. You know, is this something that, that fits your marketing plan? Okay. Uh, for for small farmers markets, there are also some uh, opportunities out there to to work as a, uh, a collaborative effort. Here's uh, farmapp.com, uh, that uh, kind of a loyalty program for farmers market, and you can kind of take a look at that. But it's out there. Uh, customer service: 50% of smartphone users uh, prefer to do customer service on their on the smartphone. So people are using more and more of this mobile type aspect, and that's really changed. I remember when people used to get upset when they got an answering machine. Now they just want to do it uh, through their uh, through their phone. Here's some other things that are doing: uh, Chatterfly, uh, Keyring, Punch Tab. You know, all of these things. Look them up. Take a look out there. This is an opportunity to use mo uh, mobile loyalty programs for smaller businesses. Chatterfly is only in bigger cities right now. But they can, but it's, it's an opportunity for them to uh, to use that. Once again, here's some resources for you: Your mobile checklist, explore other opportunities. So I won't spend too much time on this. We're running out of time here. But the future, there's tons and tons of stuff coming: Google Glass uh, apps, uh, scanning with your phone. It's unbelievable what's coming out there. Make sure you stay up on it as you go. We may not integrate at all, but there may be something out there you can integrate in your business. Okay, I put a lot of stuff into a, to a little bit of time there. So, but uh, here is uh, our contact information. Uh, I'm Rob Leeds, uh, Leeds.2 at OSU.edu, and uh, Eric Barrett is another one that works with it quite a bit. So, contact either one of us, and we'd be glad to uh, to work with you the best we can. So. Anyway, I appreciate your uh, everyone's time and uh, hope you have a good afternoon.